I'm George Haley. Uh, I work with US Tubes. I also am a consultant in the cannabis space in California specific. And I have three stores that I am a part of in the smoke shop businesses. Um, I love this industry. I think it's a great industry. And I think that if we spend some time and realize that there's professional uh, basic best practices that we can implement here, we can thrive instead of just bullshitting around and making our way through every freaking, uh, every week hoping to God we sold enough, right? This is Phil. Yeah, my name's Phil Gervasi with uh, Still Smoking out of Las Vegas. I've been in the smoke shop industry, well, I've been in the cannabis slash paraphernalia industry since 1996. I uh, own Dope House Distributors with Fat Jack. I don't know if anybody knows Fat Jack. I founded that with him. And then um, got into the uh, smoke shop business. Smoke shop, I've been there for 15 years. Um, I love this industry too. I mean, I don't, I can't imagine doing anything else. I mean, just the people, laid back, no stress, you know. Well, there's stress sometimes. Yeah. But, <laughs> but you can manage it a, bit, a little bit better if you know what I mean. So, so welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome. All right. The first thing that we're going to give you a breakdown. Uh, this is just basic uh, best practices, guys. If it gets boring to you, or if you guys feel like you know we got this and we're good here and we're ahead of it, I'm down. We can keep skipping. If you're not and you guys want to ask questions as we go through, please stop. This whole the point of this is is for all of us as buyers to better understand how we can grow our business without shooting each other in the foot, right? So the first thing we're going to talk about is determining your budget. Second thing we're going to talk about is research artists and suppliers. I got you. Uh, negotiating prices. I think we should spend a little bit of time on that just because I think it's a great conversation. Uh, being on both ends of the stick, being the retailer and being a manufacturer, I like. I have a different view of uh, how we can negotiate with respect and have everybody eat because that's really what it comes down to. If your glass blower can't eat and you're selling his glass or her glass, well, guess what? They're not going to be there next year when you want to order them up again. So there's got to be a happy median where we can respect one another's uh, profit margins. So I'd, I'd like to spend some time there and really just feel you guys out and what you guys do in that regards. Uh, introducing new items, this is kind of the uh, it's a theme in California. What we're doing is we're, we're trying to pivot, and we're trying to adapt, and we're trying to move forward. So instead of doing the things we used to do, how are we going to bring in new items so we can keep our customers and grow our customers? Uh, the last one is really uh, my favorite, the surprise and delight. It's really corporate, guys. This, is, this came from the good old Apple days from uh, when I was working there and had hair on my head. But it, it, it still holds true. It sincerely still holds true. These basic best practices that Apple spent millions of dollars researching fits in what we do. So, it, uh, not all of it, but some of it could. All right, so first thing. Better believe it, I actually have to talk to my accounts about creating a freaking budget. If you guys came here and don't have a budget, I behoove you to figure out how much money you have and what you want to spend and take the time. What do you guys think on that one? Everyone got a budget? Queen came in here to spend and blow? I love it, Jesse. Head shakes and stuff. I'm like, yes, I know what I got. I know what I got. Is it but, broken down? Is it <laughs> that, and that's that's the next step. So having a budget is first step, right? You know what your what your purse has, and you know how much you got to spend. Now we got to break it down into categories, guys. The first step is figuring out where you get the most of your money. Where is what category is really keeping you afloat? And that's really kind of an open question out there. I'd really like to hear what you guys would think is your. Uh, your best, your best category. Is it fate? Is it glass? Is it accessories? Is it t-shirts? Anyone? I know disposable vapes is probably my number one. Fair enough. Uh, um, big, big dollars. Agreed. And within being in California, with now the uh, the vape ban, that is the idea of introduction, introducing new items. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I've already had people come to my shop. I. 10 boxes of Swishers going home to California. And that's, I expect that with the vapors too. It's going to happen, guys. It's going to happen. And to get in front of it, if you're not in California and you're in other states, it's in your best interest to start thinking about what can we do to supplement that one category, which is transitioning. Um, 
our twelve. I know Phil remembers this because he's been in the industry long enough. Spice was a big, big, big category in our stores when we when I first started getting into uh, into the smoke shop business. I didn't know what spice was. I was allowed to smoke weed, so it didn't bother me. That I didn't have to look for alternatives. When I opened up my smoke shop, for four months, I had access to sell it before they banned it all. In that four months, I was able to get myself out of the red and into the black on one category. It allowed me to come to AGE and come hang out and buy glass that I would never have been able to afford previously. And what developed the whole glass section of my store. Now, with that being said, Vape came in really quickly afterwards. Uh, if you guys are in part of the industry, remember Omicron and all those little uh, the vape pens that we had the globes and it was a debacle trying to freaking teach people how to ingest this uh, this product, this new product that came out, right? But what it did is it led into a huge, huge other category in our smoke shop. And now we're getting ready to take it away from us again. Right? Mm -hmm. So really what the, the thing is, is that you've got to be paying attention to your customers and try to figure out what's going to best suit their needs. Well, also introducing new products, like you said. Anybody carry Kratom in here? Yeah. Majority or no? Yeah. Look into Kratom. The state of Nevada, you know, made it legal in the state of Nevada to sell and stuff like that. It's a, it's a great product for my store, brings in good revenue and it brings in a whole nother category. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, Kratom, you're gonna get all these like addicts and all this stuff in there and people that just, you know, you don't might not want it in your store, but in actuality, my dad takes it, he's like 77. He takes like two pills a day, it keeps him going, he loves it, it doesn't make him high, it gives him energy, it makes him feel happy and good about himself. And um, it's not for everybody, but the way you would educate him is tell him to go to online and go to, uh, um, Create a Bible online. It explains everything to everybody. We don't tell people how to use it or do it or anything. We, we basically tell them to go there and um, people thank us for carrying it. Tells, tells us that their life wouldn't be the same without it. Like some people get it, if they take it, if they're doing something else, if they don't have it, they can't go to work. They're sitting in a corner, you know, drooling on themselves. But that's not everybody. You get the older people, they want it for their aches and pains. I mean, I'm 50. I'm, Think about taking it, you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, what, what I love about his suggestion in the Kratom, and the, it's what I've really been suggesting to everybody else and all my other accounts, we need to look for consumables. The idea is that we want that return business. So when you're out here searching for product, it's not just glass. There's other products that we need to bring in so the customers are coming back. Right, papers were great in the good old days. I mean, before me, they were great. But now we make six cents on them. So selling those papers aren't there. So the idea is what can we do and what can we bring that the customer's gonna come back to us? I always challenge my accounts to stop following and trend, start, you stop chasing after trends that have nothing to do with you. Stop, you're shooting yourselves in the foot. There's no reason to carry $10,000 worth of a category that is not gonna sell in your store. If you don't have a piece of paper like this sitting next to your POS system, so that way your team can write down that it's a product or an item that the customer wants and you don't have, if that's not there, you're not paying attention to your demographics. You're not controlling your controllables. You're not taking care of the stuff that's easy. That's an easy daily practice that we can implement in our stores and our teams can do to get a better pulse on what, we're, what our customers want. Plain and simple. The, I like Kratom. I like, uh, I mean, cigarettes and the rest of it, guys, I, I, I wouldn't go backwards just because of margins, but I'm really looking forward to hearing what you guys are thinking and when, when that's in that perspective. What consumables do you think off the top of your head besides Kratom could be implemented in your stores and have that revolving customer? And I'm going to take a minute because I really do want to hear an answer from you guys on that one. So if you guys can ponder that one out for a second or two, I kind of want to think, you know, I really want to hear that. We've been looking into functional mushrooms a lot. Smart man. Yeah. Smart man. That's a new one. It is. It is, especially in LA. It's called, I mean, the LA market is blasting off on all the chocolates. I'm sorry, can you say that again? Functional mushrooms. We, um, uh, we, we're getting syringes and cultures in right now. 
so people can do their own mushrooms. You also got this box called the Shrum Box. You just inject it and yep. it just, you close it up and it does it. Um, once again, it's for religious purposes or for like, uh, for research. We don't tell them how to do anything. I even carry lion's mane and other mushrooms in the store, so you can grow any mushroom you want, you know. But that's another, that's another one. That's another category. Um, also, anybody carry any exotics, like exotic drinks, chips, stuff like that? Great for you, I'm sure. Those are, those are good. You might want to ask your people. I got drinks anywhere from 10 to $25 retail. You might not want to go that high with them. Um, between you and me, the people seem to like the clearer ones better than the dark ones. But that's just yeah. That means you're gonna know your, once again. You're gonna know your demographic. Demogra demogra clearer drinks anyway. Thank you for sharing. But how about anybody else? I got a Delta cool eight. Delta eight. Delta eight. Delta Thank eight. you, man. I was, gonna, I was waiting for it. I really was. It's illegal in Nevada. Is it? Delta yeah. eight, HHC, all that's illegal in Nevada. Wow. So California. So you gotta check your state. Remember that. For sure. Or you could be like us when we were in the good old days and. Ask for forgiveness afterwards. <laughs> I don't know how your state works, but California's gonna slap in your wrist for a second and then take it off the shelves. Yeah, but, I don't know about Nevada. No. <laughs> I'm not a legal, I'm not giving any legal advice. <laughs> Me neither, no legal advice. <laughs> How are those? To be honest with you guys, those are two great items. It's called categories that you can actually supplement. What about kava? Kava's the next, I think kava's it's- Kava's supposed to be like, like alcohol, but without the side effects. I, I didn't hear any detox. I didn't call. I didn't hear. I, I was expecting you know, that to be a big freaking push. Some people. I, I would assume everybody carries detox. Right. Right. And, and synthetic urine. Great, great, great profit margin on detox. Go to the websites. Check their MSRPs. I guarantee most of you are not charging the right price. You're leaving money on the table. Everything has gone up. So it's part of your. It's That's part another of thing. Yes. You should check all the companies that you're working with and check their MSRP so you can move them all up. So it's just the way it is, unfortunately, but you guys, if you make a couple extra bucks right now, that's great. But just remember, you're gonna go back and buy that product again, and it's gonna be up that couple dollars, and you wish you would have moved those prices up to get that. And that's what you let it right in, Phil. It's the research of your artists and your suppliers, guys. The idea is if you take the effort and you put the extra work in, there's deals out there, and there's a, it, there almost is blood in the water in regards to supplying. People are willing to give deals. If you're purchasing enough product, there's okay to ask for a little bit of a discount. If you're buying two items and you're asking for a discount, I mean, do I have to say it? You know, it's like it's it's just not good business, right? But if you know that this item is something that you sell day in and day out, it would be in your best interest to spend the money to get the MOQ that you need, so that way you can get more profit, generate a higher margin. You're carrying this product anyways. This product is gonna sell anyways. Why go out of stock? Why wait to the zero to reorder? It is in your best interest to make sure that what is selling is in your stores. It's like, it's like opening a deli and saying, you know what, today I don't have pastrami. It's like, what do you mean? It's like, come on, man. I came here because I wanted pastrami. So be that, be that store. Be that store that has the go-tos, that has the everyday product. Because guess what? When the new one comes out, you're the first store that they're gonna go to. Because you have it in stock. Your one-stop shop. I got over 200 brands in my store. And I just counted recently, probably about 220. So when you brought up cigarettes and the papers at six cents, when would the two of you or people in here, when do you decide to X a product from the store. When do you decide to move that skew? I know Phil has departments. When do you decide to upgrade or eliminate an apartment? It comes down to think about your shelves, guys. It's a great question. Thank you. <laughs> your shelves is money. That is that, it's real estate. That's real estate. If you got dust sitting on that product, you are shooting yourself in the foot because you're paying for every last bit of that every freaking month in rent. Every shelf you should look at as a dollar sign. Not the product on there, the shelf. Because the shelf is what's gonna carry the products that's gonna get it, you get money in your prop in your pocket. So if you have uh, so this how, how I do it, brother, is I look at the uh, I look at my cost cost analysis. If I have to spend ten thousand dollars in inventory and it's only yielding me three hundred dollars a month, that's wasted real estate. 
that is extremely wasted real estate. So now I'm discounting products to get that out. So now I can figure out more profit margin and bring a better product in. I got, a, I got a, no, go ahead. I got a question then. That's called, how many people are actually using a POS? That's what I was gonna say, I use a POS. It's yes. a very helpful tool. I, uh, my, my former manager who's passed away and has moved on, um, he forced me to get this POS and I really am appreciative that he did because it does a lot of work for me. It helps me order. I, I can look up an item right now and I can tell you that I haven't sold, an, sold one in a month or if I haven't sold one in a year. You know, I and then if I find out that I have an item that I don't like, I'll triple D it. I'll put three D's at the end. I just pick D. I don't know why. Discontinue, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I'll do is I have a triple D and I'll put my minimum maximum purchases to zero. And once I'm out of that thing, that's deleted out of my system because it ain't. It doesn't deserve to be there. It's not doing what it needs to do. True that. Um, I try to at least double my money on everything. Um, there are some things that back in the day you could triple, I'm kind of pulling that back down to two and a half now because of the economy. You want to make sure your customers are going to come back and appreciate you, not be like, damn, dude, I can't afford to go there anymore, especially right now with the way the economy is. Hey, I got a big time question about that. Um, does that work out like the doubling model? Does that work out like with, it's always like a struggle for me because I feel like I'm not charging enough. And like I, I just hear rumors from like other businesses where they've got like bigger margins or something. And I'm like, man, if I like get a, a glass piece or something, and I'm only supposed to double it, but I gotta pay for shipping, then sometimes I gotta ship it out, and then I gotta pay taxes, and then I've got employees that are running it. I'm like, man, that like brings like I'm, it changes it's only all like up. a couple dollars or something. You gotta like double it after, after you that. add all that though. Like the, you gotta double it after you add all that. So if you get an order in and you got shipping on it. You got to figure out the shipping for each item, and then you got to put it into your the total. Okay. And yeah. then double it from there. Okay. And on top of that. But then what about like if I got to ship it out or something? Like what about like my employee costs or something? Do I then take those prices? In that's kind of that's kind of in the profit. That's kind of your double. Okay. That's called your gross profit, and then once you're done paying all those people out, then you got your net profit at the end. Okay. So that's kind of in. That's already in the business model. And how you can follow that with a POS, think about it this way. If you're doubling your product and you did <coughs> just basic, you didn't put the payroll or anything in, you're just doubling the product and you're adding in the, what's called the uh, shipping. That's one thing that I learned after four months from an old timer. Um, I wasn't putting it in. When I first opened my store, I didn't, that didn't just hit me that shipping was a cost, right? I'm paying for it. But when I was dividing down the freaking product, I like didn't even think to put that one line item in and divide it out to the rest of the products. I was shooting myself in the foot for the first six months of the freaking store until one of my old school uncles smacked the back of my head and was like, what are you doing, dude? And so it, it's, a, it's an eye-opening conversation and I'm surprised that uh, uh, I didn't pick it up, but it's simple as that, right? It is time consuming. I mean, you basically, doing math. I don't know, you gotta take your subtotal and divide it by the amount that you pay for each item, and then then you gotta take it out, and then time or divide, take that total and then divide the shipping, or times the shipping by that percentage, and add it back, right? it's time consuming, but but you, know, you know what you're But you, you guys work. feel that the, just the double works? Because like I see like other industries where they're trying to Not on everything. Not on everything. Not on everything. Ralph, I want, to, I want to keep going on that because you're, so the, here's the key point. What about a downstem? Yeah. What right. do you guys charge on a downstem? Downstem would quadruple. I pay a dollar for a downstem, I'm getting fourteen ninety nine. Which kills me because in San Francisco, the same downstem we get a buck for, we're paying, we're getting $25 for it. So when I keep on saying control your true controllables, guys, when I say your four walls, that's what I'm meaning. I'm saying take care of your four walls. So on those products, it's, got, it's kind of like, you know, how long have you been in the business, right, Ralph? So it becomes, we're sitting in there and you're paying attention and you're with the outside your four walls. You don't want to be the guy who's undercutting everybody else. That's number one, right? Because no. what happens is you become, you hurt, the, hurt, hurt, you hurt everybody else. Because everybody in here is doing the same thing you're doing. And if you decided you wanted to freaking take it five bucks cheaper, you just took five bucks out of everybody else's freaking pocket. And we were talking about that earlier. When I'm talking about heavy product, when I'm talking about like artists who are freaking putting their heart and soul into this, it's a different, that's a different market now. Now that's a different category. I treat that completely different than I do my Chinese glass that I'm buying from, uh, you know, from wherever. Or my, you know, my uh, Southern LA glass that's cheapo, no name, whatever. That, I mean, those, that's where we're gonna try to eat, right? That's gonna be the extra that we get some wiggle room. Wait, and try I, wanna, to I wanna respect the artist too by not like over, over 
overcharging for what, what they are. Like, well, like you got artists in the U.S., I would say double. Uh, for sure. Stuff from out of the country, you can definitely put more on. Um, Fred from Humblown Glass, he sells American-made U.S. stickers, I think. I put American stickers on all my American-made glass. That helps, too, because then people come in and complain about the price, and I'm like, bro, it's from America. You're not getting a cheap piece of glass. You're getting something with quality and made in the United States. And that helps diffuse the situation and actually softens them up to maybe buy that piece. Great, and that leads into your guys' stores once again. What's gonna differentiate you all from your competitors down the street is I firmly believe is professionalism. If you don't have your, your items in your stores tagged, if you don't have them organized and clean, if you don't do a walkthrough with your store, with a, with a new customer who just came in, and you don't walk them through your store, you're doing yourself a disservice. It's okay that you've seen it a million times because you're there every day. That customer is that first time. That passion that you had that first day when you opened up that shop, that, that every customer deserves that, that first time. They deserve that type of experience. That's what's gonna set you guys apart. We're all here going to get, chasing after the same glass. 10 years ago, I would have to freaking pretend that I worked with the freaking glass blower, carry some boxes in, and try to freaking pick up a few freaking uh, pieces before anybody got in, right? That's not the case anymore. It's not. We don't have to go above and beyond and all this little extra to get this product. When you're talking about a, it's called talking to a heady glass blower, when I go talk to a heady glass blower and his whole or her whole uh, shelf is all sold out or it's gone, I'm happy to still talk to that person because now they're sold out. Now I get to pick my colors. Now I get to make an order and say, you know what? I don't want a 14 mil. Can you do it on a 10 mil? Yeah. If you order six, cool. I'll order six. Right? So just because the, you know, the greatest artists out there are sold out, it doesn't mean they're not interested in your work and what you want. So in my mind, this is, this is synergy. Without us, there's better. no them. Without them, there's no us. I mean, social media, I think, is the biggest curveball because as an artist, you can backdoor us. And when I say us as smoke shop owners, it happens regularly. My easy answer to that is I stop ordering it from you. If you're gonna sell it online or direct for the same freaking dollar that you're gonna sell it to me for me to double it up and make me look like I'm the asshole, no thank you. you I won't be the asshole anymore, right? So it, that, when it comes to those key items, those are the, those are the ones I, I white glove, right? I, I really wanna make sure that I'm developing a relationship with an artist and with a manufacturer that's gonna have my best interest at heart. I mean, I, I'll say it out loud, US Tubes always took care of me. If I needed pieces that I wanted smaller or bigger, or if I needed a color, it was a phone call. US Tubes like, George, I got you. I'll take care of you. Because I'm buying three grand worth of freaking glass every month. If he didn't do that, I'd be like, what a dick. <laughs> I mean, we're being honest, right guys? We wouldn't be, like you're spending three grand with a guy, you're giving you money, and you're gonna tell me you don't wanna make me a blue down stem? Well, then fuck it. I don't want them, you know. I don't want your next order. How about that? Ship. It's easy. It really is. At this point, it's not saturated. At this point, we have our choice. We get to pick who we do business with, and that's a great, great, great thing. That's why I'm. That's why I'm a business owner and not working for corporate. I get to choose who I do business with. I get to choose who I give my money to, and that makes a big, freaking. Difference. And I do. Right? And it feels good. It does. It does. It does. It, those 14 hour days, 17 days straight, that's when I remind myself this is why. Right? This is why. So it's a good feeling and just remind yourself that you're standing on your own too and you're still getting it done. Plain yeah. and simple. What's up guys? How y'all doing? I got a quick uh, I got a quick thing on your stickers on your on your bongs and stuff, pipes. <clears throat> so what I do in my store is I'll put I have a POS now, but back in the day I'd put the price. Top left corner, I'd put my department. Top right corner, I'd put the lowest number I could go on that piece. Now, your employees aren't coming, hitting you up. Hey man, what can I do on this price? What can I do on this piece? Now they're there, they, they know what they could, they could finagle with the customer. So it gives them that wiggle, that wiggle room to make the sale. Cause they're trying to get a hold of you and you're like, oh my God. Or if you're busy and you can't answer the phone and they're like, oh, I tried to call you to get a discount, but the guy left. You know, you're losing, you're leaving money on the table. And I mean, 
That's, that's where that two and a half and two comes in too now. So now I got that low on there. Well, that low is actually double. So I take 20% off my two and a half, and that's, that's double. And so there you go. Or I just take 20% off. It's not the double, but it, it, there's the wiggle room. There is. And that, oh, and I was going to ask if there was a science to your wiggle room besides That's what I do. I put, I put the low on the sticker so my employees can go lower than the actual price. Uh, okay. So then now, if you're going to lose that customer, you can you go, you know what? We can give you a discount today. It's, you know, we like you, and you're going to buy this and that as long with this. and. You know, you just tell them you give them an extra deal. And they you, love you for that. And, love you. And it's not just the customer who loves you. What you just did, and what Pete, what's called, what Phil keeps on saying, and I, I want to nail it in your guys' head, empower your team. If you do not empower your team, your phone will never stop ringing. <laughs> Plain and simple. You are, have your controllable set in place. If you have a POS, his system, it was made up when we had to still do sticker tags. You know, we used to put the little code in the bottom of it. You did the little turn, 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 turn. That's the old school shit. And you had the freaking code. And all my teams every week, because I'd change them, they'd be like, George, what's the code of the week? Cool. They look at the 00042. You know, the two is a discount, right? Now, you don't have to. Now it's in your POS. You can set it up, and they are empowered to give that extra bit of love. I don't, talk, I don't call it a discount. I never call it a discount. I don't want to ever disparage the product. Never, never, never. I'm going to take care of you because of your loyalty. Yeah. You keep coming back in here, I'm taking care of you for your loyalty. And what we do is we have a loyalty program. In your POS system, these are something as simple as setting up a dollar amount that you need your customer to spend to take care of them. That's kind of hard for me though because I'm giving the discounts already. Mm -hmm. So if I'm giving 20%, I mean, I don't know how, I don't, I don't know. I guess I gotta look into it more because if enough. I'm already giving discounts on top and then you're gonna get points on top of the discount, then I'm like, well. Then you gotta change your equation, right? Yeah, That's like if, yeah, if you get 30% off, you're gonna get like 1% of discount if you, or the points. <laughs> if you, you know, spend uh, like full price, you might get 5% of the points. Yeah. The, if, like, if it comes to, it becomes the math on what you guys want to work out. But the idea of what Phil and I are both trying to get down is that you want to empower your employees, but you also want to make sure they're not disparaging the product. One thing I can't stand is if when my team takes a US 2 bomb and then brings a high side bomb and goes, I can give you a better deal on this one. You didn't even do shit, dude. What do you mean? I can give you a better deal on this one. How about this is a nine mil with six flame po polished cuts and slits with a huge hunker of a joint. And over here, it's a little thinner, five mil, kind of kind of cool diffused down snap, and it's centered. Well, which one's better, George? Well, how about this? Do you slap your bomb when you freaking put it on the table? Or are you the one who's going to clean it every freaking week and make sure your downstairs are clean? Which one are you? Well, I'll kind of slap my bomb around. Well, then how about this? I suggest you as tubes. You know, but if they told me, George, dude, I clean my piece every time, and every time I take a rip every session, I clean it. Well, dude, then no, no high side might be cool. Why not? They're down some slit. Go for it, right? So it really depends on the needs of the customer. A lot of times, we're just trying to shove the product down their throat without asking any open-ended questions. If you don't get to know who the freak's buying this product, and you're assuming, I promise you, you're missing out on a lot of sale. A lot of sale. When I say open-ended question, who, what, where, when, and why. It's open-ended because they have to answer you with a response, not yes or no. They gotta share. Who is this for? Oh, it's for my mom. And you know what, dude, she's got kids. Cool, right? But this Wookiee just came in your store, and you're thinking he just wants a dab rig with a fat freaking uh, torch in, in your head. No, this dude came in to buy for his mom. You asked, when? Oh, dude, every night. Cool, well then you need, a, you need an everyday driver. Then you need something that's gonna be better than this cheap shit. You're gonna need something that's gonna take a beating because this is who you use every day. Why? Well, because you said to me you wanted concentrates. That's why you want a rig. A smaller the piece, the better the flavor. Oh, but I like this bigger piece. I got you. It's not, but it's not gonna fit your needs. Now what you did is you took it out of your responsibility. You asked the questions to the customer. The customer gave you the responses. You positioned it, right? Now the difference between that unknown caller. The difference between that conversation and what's the best you got, dude? Where do you start from there? You don't know a price point, and then now you got your now you got your team going. Well, what do you want to spend? 
yeah, here's a thousand dollar piece, check it out. And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then, but that, that takes, it, what it does is it creates boundaries when you're still trying to take down the boundaries, right? They're coming here because they think they know, you know what you're doing. I mean, my biggest argument when I first opened in my store was, I look the, the part, right? I, yeah, you know how to buy, buy, you smoke, you smoke, you, right? No one gave you no fucking argument or it's called our conversation about what the pipe was or how big a bowl was or do you have a freaking, uh, do you have the carb on the left or the right? That wasn't a conversation when I walked into a smoke shop when I was growing up. It's, you know what it's for, smoke it, if you like it, get out, right? Now, that's not our customer base. It's not. You've got to take the time to educate them. You do. And how things are, so much is changing on a regular basis in our industry, get out of here. I mean, it's, you've got to take the time and take the effort to, take, to enrich their life, right? For the corporate conversation, right? Enrich your customer's life. And you really are. It's, it really comes down to you are enriching your life. You are going to create a relationship that's going to be past just the college kid. I got a couple right? of things on that. When you get your college kid to come back, because they trusted you. When they freaking graduate college and they freaking come back and still buy their product from you, it's because you earned their freaking, uh, their, uh, their, their patron their trust. trust. Their trust. So it's not, stop looking at dollar signs and look at, look at them as relationships. Yeah. I mean, we're, my, my tell all my customers, we're not a location or a destination. There's one shop for us in town and that's it. I got people coming from all over the city to come to us. They won't shop anywhere else. It's all about our customer service. I tell my guys, without these customers, there's no store, there's no job, you know? And they love working at my store because it's fun. It's not it's not like, you know, Apple or Hustle Bustle or any. They come in, they get to the smoke, yourself. they get the dab, and the, you know, you know. We have a good time, we work, everybody. We're almost like a bar, to be honest with you. We got people coming in, they're telling us their problems, we're there listening, it's like, you know, it's, it's like, the truth though, cheers, it? you know, it's like, hey, Norm. It's, you know, we, we, we have a camaraderie with the neighborhood. I mean, knock on wood, you know, they treat us right over there, you know, because we treat them right. True. You know, um, like, Here's a good example. I got customers coming in and they're just first starting to smoke and they go, hey, I need a, I want to get a PAX. I heard about the PAX. And I'm like, how long have you been smoking for? They're like, well, I just got my first bag and you know, I haven't smoked in 60 years or 50 years, you know? And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, you know, it's like a $300 item, right? I go, why don't you try out vaporizing in a different, you know, in a different price range first? Let's get you in like maybe a G Pen Dash or something, you know? And then if you like that, then let's go up and then you could upgrade later on, you know, down the road. I'm not looking to knock them over the head. Yeah, yeah, $300 right off the bat here. Yep, no problem, here you go, have a great day. You know, you don't wanna knock them over the head. Not only that, you wanna open that box. You wanna show them how to use it, how to load it, turn it on, turn it off. Yeah, all that stuff. remind them how to charge, how to charge it. it. Yeah, that's like the funniest thing ever. How many times did I have a customer come back? I mean, that's how I know I was gonna can the employee. Is their team member, right? Because every time a customer, he sold a damn freaking vape pen, a customer had to come back to tell me he didn't know how to charge it. Yeah. I'm like, so you, then you ask your team member, accountability. It's your right, this is your store, this is your livelihood, it's accountable. Why are you not taking the time to show this customer how to use a product? If he gives me an answer or she gives me an answer, well I had five customers behind me and I was by myself, George, and someone was on the lunch, then okay, you know what, I might slide on that one and not kick the sin. But at three times, four times, look, 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 I mean, my store is, there's no excuse. At that point, it's a behavior that they're unwilling to adopt. And if they're unwilling to adopt it, then they need to go. Yeah, I had another situation where I opened 10 minutes late one day. I, I open up the door, a guy comes into my store, he's like, man, he's like, I was here right when you opened, but you weren't here, so I went across the street. I'm like, oh yeah, he's like, yeah, he goes, he goes, the guy wouldn't let me touch his glass. He told me if I'm not gonna buy anything to get out of here, to leave, you know, he just like, that was, that's not very welcoming. He came to my shop, I said, well, I'm open till midnight, so you can stay here all day if you want. And you can touch every piece of glass if you like. It's not a problem. You know, in all the years that I've had, that I've owned the store, 15 years, I maybe had a customer, once again, knock on wood, uh, drop a piece maybe once, break it once. I mean, Heady pieces, that's a different story, you know, you're not grabbing a list, I, we can establish you can afford it. 
you know, and, and you understand if you break it, you're buying it. Yeah. But you know, just regular everyday glass pieces. I mean, people want to touch them. We even put water in them. We wipe them down with like turf wipes, you know, so they can see the function on it if they want. We use distilled water. So it doesn't, you know, keep like watermarks and stuff like that, which helps. I'll take it one step further. What we did is, uh, so if you, if I bought something from Elba, if I bought something from Kim Thomas' Z Glass, if I bought something from Chick Mobius, what I would do is, do me a favor, guys. Send me a freaking video with the water in action, right? Send it to me. And you know what they do? Sure, George, no problem. They're not arguing over it. They'll send me a clip. I have a revolving a freaking, what's called the uh, iPad, not even iPad, the freaking cheaper version. I'm sorry, I don't know what it is. But freaking, you turn it around and all those videos are set. So, I have TV up on the wall. There you go. It runs all day. If you, so the idea is Phil is a good hearted person for putting water in his piece. If my uncle found out I was doing that in our smoke shops, I'd catch a beat. It's like sacrilege, don't ever do that. Rah, right? But that's old school. It's all about customer service. It's about customer service. service. And so, a way to get around that was that's why I set up that digital freaking uh, that digital service, right? To be able to see the videos without having to piss off my uncle who swears to God that this is the wrong way to sell the product, right? But uh, the, I, there's other ways of doing it, is what I'm trying to say. If you have that one-off piece and you don't want to put water in it, not you. Yeah. You no, know, it makes sense. Not every piece. Can't do it with every piece. And then when you're talking about with it, when you're talking about heady pieces as well, um, if you don't have the teammates and the uh, the support staff to sell a heady product or a, a, a well-made American piece, I don't know why you have that piece in your store. I don't. If you think you're gonna follow the Cave Smoke Shop or Steve, who are still smoking, Gorilla Radio, you know, Gorilla Radio, and you're thinking that you're gonna go on their Instagram and pick out the pieces, oh, that's what I'm gonna sell, and I'll put it in my store, and that's how you're creating your freaking your your buy. Disservice. Disservice. It's not your demographic. You didn't do any extra effort to find out if your, your customers wanted that piece. You didn't know what color they wanted. You didn't even think about what they were gonna use it for. You're chasing after somebody else's hard work that did their due diligence for their customer. I tried that in the beginning. We all do. It's not fun. We wanna cheat, right? We wanna freaking get to the freaking next level. We wanna jump the freaking steps and the obstacles and get to the next. And what I'm telling you, it's simple as having a freaking piece of paper next to your register and writing down what your customers are freaking missing in your store. This is a, this is such basic best practices. I know it sounds so stupid, like dude, there's no way that shit works. It works. Swear to God, it works. I repeated it like five times already. It works. So if you're not doing it, if you got Instagram, start throwing up polls on your Instagram story. Hey, what, what, what would you like to see? Let them fill it in. Or hey, would you rather see this or rather see that? You know, you only got money for one thing. Ask them which one they want to see in the store first. It's and, a tool. And what you guys just did is you created another relationship. Content and too. A, content and another pathway to reach out to your customer. Now it's not just them walking in the store. Now you're using that Instagram post and that to your advantage. Right? Before we're thinking it's our advantage because we're scrolling and trolling and doing all this thinking we're doing ourselves a service. We're not. So the idea is put it in the hands of your customers. They're the ones that are gonna support you, right? Um, I, Salt was a, uh, Lucan is one of my favorite glass blowers and where I got to start with uh, when I opened my store. He was my first heady glass blower I got to put in my, uh, in my shop. And it took three customers who were in love with this man, sharing their pieces they bought through hook and crook and through the through this show or they squeezed through over here, we got this one piece. And I realized people are asking. I hit up Lucan. Hey, brother, do me a solid. I don't never bought any of your glass. I don't know anything about your glass. How am I gonna how am I gonna sell it and what should I be buying? He called me and had a 30 freaking minute conversation about why did I why do I think I need his glass in my store? Not I can sell you three thousand dollars right now. That wasn't the fucking conversation. The conversation is why did you reach out to me? For your store and then i shared with them i got three guys who love your freaking product and they keep beating me up to bring it and i can't figure out if i can afford to bring it in true story he gave me three thousand dollars worth of product to start off with with no money to get the ball rolling to see if it would work out 30 days sold 
Now, as a smoke shop owner, that just made me feel like, damn, dude, salt's the man, right? And so when he told me, hit up Z Glass, Kim Thomas, what did I do? Hit her up. Hey, Z, you know, you know, this is that, the other. Oh, George, you know, I make the vagina pieces. I didn't know that. Shit, that sounds cool, right? It's like, I didn't, when you saw it hit me up, I didn't know that there was such a thing as a vagina piece, right? I'm like, so how do you hit a vagina? Right? Sorry, that's how I was just trying to do that. That was not where I wanted to go with it, right? But um, it, slowly but surely, we got product in. And what I realized very quickly is that the artists are receptive to hearing our feedback. Darby and Leela, like, God damn, if I haven't met a fucking couple that are just true and honest good people, like, put me underneath their wing and said, George, dude, you don't want to buy this piece. They told me you don't want to buy this piece. You're not going to want to buy this piece. It's going to sit. Pick these five pieces out. You're going to blow it out. They knew to tell me that because they are paying attention to what I'm buying all year long. When I came in there thinking I knew what I was doing, Mr. Ha -ha, I'm the buyer now, I know what I got going on. I walk in there thinking firing at all this shit. And they're like, dude, George, you're missing. You're, you're shooting at things, doing what I'm telling you not to do, right? And it, having people like Salt in my back, you know, back corner and like Darby say, George, that's not your piece. This is the pieces, dude. Sell these guns with a little cactus on it, dude. You don't gotta go crazy on the rest of it. And how about this? You haven't bought color yet. Why do you want to put color on your shit now? Well, you know what, Leela, I thought it'd be something good. It's out of your price point. Your retail price point, you're not gonna make the same margin. I believed her. I still bought two pieces of color on it. <laughs> I mean, I still did it. But that's because I wanted to have that and support them. I don't care. They're still sitting in the store. One of them, it really is. And it's still my shrine. They can't sell it. That piece reminds me, take care of the customers in your store. So kids to set up those take care of the Take care of the people that are take care of you, you too. I mean, yeah. these blowers and stuff, you know, it's about relationships. Treat them the way you want to be treated. Seriously. You know, yes. kindness goes a very long way. I, um, a lot of times I don't even ask for discounts. I get them because of the way I treat the people. They just want to give them to me because of the way I treat them. You know, it's, it's all about, you know, your, your interaction with people. It goes a long way. That big baller chain, I'm kicking ass, I'm the freaking one, I'm, I'm, I'm the daddy, whatever, whatever. That shit's freaking old. That shit's old. We're grown. We're here for business. I'm not here to shine on you. I'm here to make money with you. I'm not trying to show off to you. I want to make sure that you get to eat and I get to eat. That's how this works. Yeah. Go. A couple other things. Uh, Rock it, man. <laughs> uh, we might change a little subject, but I, um, one thing I have, uh, this girl named Shana Wilkinson, she has the uh, Facebook, uh, private head shop owner group on there. And um, I, t I take things off of her, uh, her post and also people on the page over there. And one of the good posts I got off her was uh, selling stickers, real cheap stickers. I mean, I know uh, BDD Wholesale sells stickers and uh, they're like a pack of stickers, 50 of them for anywhere from five to eight bucks. So you're, just, you're spending, you know, 10 to 12 cents a sticker. I even go out of the country and get them even cheaper for like maybe five cents a sticker. I'm selling them for 50 cents each, two for a dollar, 10 for five bucks. I mean, it's just, or maybe more than that. Four dollars. Right, four bucks, thank you. Um, but stickers, I mean, I, I never thought it would be, it's not a cash cow, but it's definitely a lot of extra money. We got people going in there and buying 100 at a time, you know what I mean? It's just those little things, those extra things, you could add money to your, your bottom line and to that sale. UPT guys, yeah, units per transaction. It's not it's not beating customers over the head on one item. It's how many items can we offer a customer. My big thing is I call it the complete solution. My with the open-ended questions, you get to know your customer what they're looking for. If they're coming in and they're buying a rig, and you didn't talk to them about a freaking slurper, or you didn't talk to them about a torch, or you didn't talk to them about butane, you're doing a dab tool. A dab tool. Some of them don't even know they need all this stuff. You're doing they're the customer. They're gonna walk out and go home and not even have. All and they'll be pissed at you for having to come back to come get the shit, right? Because you didn't go. Hey, you got a dab tool? No. Here, I got a million to pick from. What you wiggle flake do you want? I, I always go to the hookah because the hookah was the easiest one for us in the suburbs. They would come in and they'd see this, you know, it'd be some guy like, oh, I'm throwing a party and I, I, want, a, I want a big hookah, we all get to hit it, right? The dude buys a freaking $300 hookah, no freaking she shit, no coals. <laughs> like, I, I want to slap the shit out of my team for that one. It's like, what are you doing? The guy just finished telling you he's having a party. 
He's buying a three hundred dollar hookah he's never used before. Did the dude needs a case of fucking coals and he's like six flavors to walk out of here with it? Yep. You turn a three hundred dollar sale. You, it could have been a six hundred dollar sale, and not upselling. Don't get it twisted, guys. It's no. not upselling. That's the complete solution. That's You're doing them a disservice by letting them walk out without. They their came shit. to you because you know your shit, and you couldn't remember to freaking sell them coals. <laughs> Stop smoking at work. Smoke at work afterwards, dude. Close the doors and burn. You're missing out. You guys are really missing out. And that's the kind of shit that we, I see on a regular basis. I go to my accounts and hang out at smoke shops. And I, dude, I love it because I get, I still get a pass. I own a smoke shop and I still get to go to other smoke shops. And I still get to sell them. And I love that because it doesn't really work in our industry. Usually, usually no one wants trade secrets. Oh, I don't want to see what I got. And all that bullshit. It's bullshit. This is the team here, guys. You guys gotta agree that we are all on the same page. Yeah, we're competitors. Yeah, we're freaking fighting to get that margin and that profit, but we're not enemies. We're not, and we gotta start looking at your neighbors as enemies. If you guys have better, better relationships with your competitors, you'll be able to hold true on your prices. You'll be able to hold your prices solid. And you know what? It's okay. There's no benefit to racing to the bottom. There's no one who wins. If you guys are undercutting one each other back and forth, nobody wins. Not even the customer. You touch on exclusivities at all? I do. I love exclusivities. I really do. And you know what? A lot of people can't do it anymore. They can't. They can't just be exclusive to one freaking location because you know what? Seven miles away, I need that freaking store, right? So if you can cover a region for me, like if you have multiple stores, then sure. I'll give you exclusivity in this region. I'm not giving up more than five miles. I promise you that. And in some, in some regions, it's two. If you're in San Francisco, it's 100 yards. You know what I mean? Like, so it's a, it really depends on where you guys are at and what the product is. That's for sure. That's for sure. But um, what I'm seeing in the industry right now is on the nicer and the better made American made product, we're, it's hard to get. We're seeing back stock. I'm seeing you gotta wait six months. I'm hearing you gotta wait four months. That's why most of us are here. We wanna put the money in the pocket of the class that we want, so I know I got it to freaking sell when I need to sell it. So it makes sense. But on that cheap Chinese stuff and the cheap, cheap import stuff or the less expensive import stuff, man, if your guy has it down the street and you guys are making money, that's fine. But don't drop 10% just because you want that sale. Just know that one day he's gonna get one or her, she's gonna get one, and know one day you're gonna get one or she's gonna get one. It, it, it really does work itself out that way. It really, really does. Um, but on the art stuff with it, like, I mean, yeah, if I, if I could, but I mean, I wouldn't if I was you guys. If I was an artist, I wouldn't be exclusive. I would really freaking go out there and get mine. What I would really hope as artists, what I challenge all the artists I bring in my stores, is just don't undercut us. Don't go on, don't go on Instagram, oh don't go on Facebook, don't go on your freaking, your uh, whatever, Telegram or whatever we're using now to freaking, to you know, get this done. Don't undercut me. If you're gonna sell it straight auctions, auctions, how about this? If you're gonna sell it to me for freaking 500 bucks and you wanna sell it to directly to the customer, but you're expecting me to sell it for 800, sell it for 800. It's the same thing, right? It's called, why are you undercutting yourself? Why are you devaluing yourself? So I ask artists, are you gonna go freaking bend me over because you couldn't make your freaking month this year? Or so are you gonna be okay to freaking ride it through because I'm gonna do another order next month with your shit? And these are good questions to ask. That's why we all came here. We all came here because we wanted to shake the hands, meet the people we're spending money with, and know who we are spending our money with. What kind of caliber person are we dealing with, right? It costs us all money to be, not just the exhibitors. We all had to pay for a hotel room. We all had to pay for the freaking Uber to get here. We gotta pay eight bucks for a bottle of water, right? We still gotta do it, don't we? You know, we gotta pay the park. I mean, so let's, let's be honest here. It's not a vacation. I mean, I, I love that when we're done with work, we're still wearing Vegas, but this shit costs money, and we're out here spending it. So it's like I said, it's synergy. You're gonna meet people here that you're gonna be able to do business with, and you're gonna meet people here you're not. And that's okay. It really, really is. Do um, anybody, I guess most of the states now are either medical or recreational, is that true? So what I did when um, our state went wreck in uh, medical, is I've implemented a couple of, uh, I, hate, I don't want to call it discount, I guess love. <laughs> Love's good, uh, I like love. <laughs> um, if you got a medical card, you get 20% off most items. So now like, all the name brand items at MSRP, they don't get discounts. 
But all the stuff that I can mark up myself, you know, two and a half, three, whatever, now I got the wiggle room to do those discounts. So for the medical patients, I give 20% off. But here's the better one. I, I love the cannabis community in Nevada, so what I do is I give anybody working in the cannabis community that has an agent card 30% off. Right, right. I give them an extra 10%. Why? Not only it's because, you know, love. they love, yeah, it's love. They, they also love our store, they come to us, but it's also, now they're my ambassador. So they're the ones selling the weed, most of them, you know, mostly butt tenders that do this, but they're selling their product to the customer, and they're like, well, I wanna get this, or I need that, or this. Now all those butt tenders that know that I give them 30% off, and they come to my store, and they've seen it, and they know what I have in there, now they're telling these people, hey, go to Still Smoke, and they got a great selection, they got everything you need over there. Um, they even sometimes, I get people come up to me and go, hey, you know what? We got the same stuff in my store, but we send them to you anyway. Yeah. Why? Because I give them luck. They don't get a deal with their dispensary. They don't get 30% off most items. Mm -hmm. now, I don't give discounts off of Dr. Dabbers. I don't give discounts off of like, you know. Uh, fixed cost product. Expensive you, stuff you, or MSRP, yeah. I just can't do it. But anything I can do, I will do. I mean, I got 40 different things on the back of my card telling them that what they get. Even incense. And we're talking about Why? guys. Because they're getting a discount. I mean, just, you know. Think about part, think about marketing, how much we spend. If you're not spending money on marketing, you're still afloat and still doing well, God bless you. Because that's freaking, that's a, ten, that's a testament to you developing your customer base and taking care of your four walls. For the rest of us that want to either grow the business or are starting new, marketing is expensive. 30% discount, which still has margin on the product where you can still profitable for some guy or girl to be a cheerleader for your store is cheap. That's cheap, y'all. You're still getting paid to have that product walk out your door to give that 30% discount for a cheerleader who's going to sit there all day long and talk to customers specifically for you. Yeah, I found a card. So it basically has everything kind of on the back there. Tells them they get 30% off on the front. I also go down to, I go to all the dispensaries, like lab, not this Christmas, the Christmas before. Wait, what was that card? I'm sorry. It's a, it's the 30% off card. So you just hand, you hand that out when you go to the I hand it to the dispensary, the people that are working there, and let them know that they get 30% on my store on most items. Okay. And then I try to list as many items on the back to kind of get them enticed and, you know, say, wow, you do on all that stuff? Wow, that's crazy. Gotcha. Um, but like during Christmas, I try to go around, I hook them up, I got a, I give them a grinder. I got a pen in there. This pen has a light on the end, so it's kind of cool, so people can see stuff. I give them a sticker. I got a plastic card in there. Every tray I sell goes with a plastic card so they can scoop up their shit and roll it. Everybody, so they I love this card. And all these things that we're putting together, that we're giving away for free, pennies on the dollar, pays dividends later. Instagram, Google, go there, and I give them a lighter. This whole kit right here probably cost me three bucks. Total. Total. Right, and it's called, if someone, if someone, for, yeah. it's way if someone forgets this lighter at a party, you got five more customers who just got to see this, right? If, this, if one of your customers sticks this on the freaking gas station pump next to the Biden did this, that, that, you know, people are gonna notice, right? <laughs> people see this shit, right? You guys all know the stickers, right? <laughs> Dude, I, that's sitting there all, all the time. day long. All day long. And once again, these are little things. I also that, do this. I got glob mops. I'll put my sticker on the back. Why? It's gonna sit there on the counter. I got dab tools. I turp wipes. I put a sticker on those too. Not on the top because they tear it off. You put it on the side. All these things I learn as I come, you know, over time. Yeah, for sure. But but think about how simple these things are, guys. Like how simple these basic best practices that we implement, if we can do these things well, and we can do it consistently, just like going to Mickey D's, guys. I mean, I'm sad to say it, but a number one is the same number one from California to all the way to New York and back. Same shit. A medium is a medium. A large is a large. We all know the prices. We know how we can upgrade them. That's the kind of level of consistency you want in your shop. Higher, slow, fire, fast. I'll say it again. Higher, slow. Take your time. Don't hire when you need somebody. Be hiring to get dealt with somebody, right? Because it's going to take three months on average to actually nail down that one who's going to be able to sustain with you. 
The second thing is, they don't all have to be lifers. Not every one of the people that walk in your store is gonna be the guy that's gonna be there for the rest of your freaking life. I got, I, like, it, it dis, it's a disservice, because you know and I know that the person that's working their ass off for you can't freaking have a, make a living and live, really, on base of what we sell, them, or what we pay them. 18 bucks an hour, 20 bucks an hour in California, and shit. I mean, I can barely eat, I can barely sleep, I can barely pay the rent. And we're expecting them to treat your store, our store, like they own it? Come on, right? So there's gotta be a value that you're adding on to your teams. We're talking about buyer's education. We're talking about oh, how do we you know, get our more margin. Well, we haven't really talked about our teams. We so got treat them. Treat them right. Go above and beyond. In California 2023, January, they just passed a law stating that it is open books on payroll that every team member is allowed to know what they're getting paid. What? Right? So that one employee that came in and you hired and you're, you're part-time, four hours a week, you got him at 12 bucks an hour and he's not complaining and you're happy that you got him there? Well, you'll complain. And instead of waiting for the, 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 the complaining, take care of them. They're taking care of you, right? So they're not the, you know, they're not the ones you know, stealing from you or doing all the, they're there to help you out, right? Now, what I mean by you only gotta keep your teams forever. I believe in managing up. If you can take the passion of your team members and then allow them to develop and grow, that's better than 10 bucks extra an hour. I promise you right the fuck now better than 10 bucks more an hour. Because now they get to be passionate. They get to wake up in the morning and not think about the dollar that's getting me to go to that store. It's what I get to do while I'm at that store. So if you happen to hire somebody who you freaking is a great salesman or a great salesperson, and then you take it, Sorry. No, 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 I'm not mad at you, I'm not good. Um, the salesperson, it's, if they're killing it, but, they're, but their passion is in the Instagram, and their passion is in the, uh, the, the videography, marketing, there's a pattern, they're showing you, this is what I'm going to college for. I'm studying economics, George. I need to freaking figure out, how to put them in a position. Put them in the position. Not, I'm not saying give them the books, you know, right? You don't have to give them the checkbook, but give them enough room to show their worth to show their value, to grow. I promise you, when they leave you, they're never really leaving you. You're always gonna be that one boss, that one manager who went out above and beyond to take care of me. They're gonna appreciate you. Right, and it goes a long way, guys. It really, really does. I got me, most of my freaking team members still come back to me and ask questions. George, I'm starting this over here, this job. What do you think about that? And I'm looking, I'm like, dude, I'm not even in that zero space. Why would you want to ask me that? Well, just what do you think? Okay, well, here's what I think. You should research it, goofy fuck. Like you told you the other damn time. Go do your work. <laughs> Stop pretending like I got all the answers. Do your due diligence, right? And they're gonna love you for it. They really are. And there's gonna be some of those employees that you wish you could keep and you wanna hold on and you want to make to dear life, you're doing this shit. Don't go, yeah. don't Please. go. Please. Those are the ones you gotta let. Those are the ones you do. Because what you're doing is you're holding them back and they're gonna hate you for it. They're gonna, maybe not the first day, maybe not the first month or the second month, but they're gonna. It's gonna happen. Why piss them off? You should have been freaking hiring already. You should be already freaking looking for your next. You really should. We're in retail, ladies and gentlemen. We're not in lifers. We turn and burn. And if you're lucky to have some good guys and good girls on the way, and sometimes you're not so lucky. I'm super lucky. My manager's been with me 12 years. My other assistant manager's been with me, I'm gonna say 2014, so that's what, eight years? Yeah. Uh, well, other guys, five years. Well, I pay well. I, I grew up uh, in the 80s doing landscaping with my dad, and, they would pay like three thirty-five an hour, but my dad would pay five bucks an hour. And I realized you're gonna get better quality people, not that they're bad, but just better quality workers and people that maybe more care experience. a little more. And you're, if you're giving them a little more, they appreciate that. You're not trying to nickel and dime them, you know? And um, I mean, over the years, I've finally been able to give them insurance. I give them health insurance now, up to a certain amount of, per month. I give them $300 a month. That's amazing. Um, uh, after five years, I give them a week of, uh, you know, uh, vacation. vacation. You know, a lot of times these guys get sick, I'll just kind of just eat the hours, you know what I mean? I'm like a family over there. I, I appreciate my guys so much. I tell them all the time, too. 
you know, I also get on their ass, but I, I try to tell them, you know, I really appreciate what you're doing, because they need to hear that. They don't hear that enough. It, you know, they kind of get upset, and they won't say nothing, but it'll just kind of boil Fester. inside of them, you know what I mean? Positivity and progression. And try to give them a tip, or a man, a tip. Try to give them their, their raise without them asking. They'll appreciate that too. You're keeping track of when their year's up, and you know, they, if you're willing to give them a raise without them asking, they know that you appreciate what they're doing. Agreed. Uh, so to wrap, not to wrap up, I'm gonna, we're gonna go into surprise and delight. We just had some good conversations. We're gonna go over a little bit in the two, uh, the two o'clock. If you guys need to go, no, I'm not mad at you guys. There's work to be done. Um, daily downloads. So in regards to your employee, your team base, communicating the needs of the business when they come into the location to the store on every shift. This is something that we implemented in all our retail shops. If you're out of stock on 14 mil, five inch down stems, they need to know that. Because when a customer walks in and they're fishing, what are you doing? A disservice to the customer, right? Instead of going straight to the customer, like, you know what, we're out of stock, it's coming in Thursday, my boss is gonna tell us some time, let me get your phone number, I'll call you when he comes in. That's a whole better experience than, well, I'm just gonna go across the street, right? So communicate with your team. They need to know that you're gonna be blasting off discounts on all of this freaking one product. Go nuts, 20%. Share that with them. And if you don't have anything to share with them that first 10 minutes, how was your day? How did you guys do? Cool, it's been kind of slow here today, nothing too crazy. Let's get after some inventory and hopefully we'll have a good day. Speaking of inventory, if new inventory comes in, make sure they know it's there. They don't oh, know it's there. there. How are they gonna sell it? They answer they a phone, oh no, we're out right now. Oh no, we got it in while your day's off. We have it. Thank you, Phil. I mean, these are, these are such stupid small things. I keep saying they're, they're stupid. They're not stupid. They're really very, very specific small things that will help generate more money for your business. Like you said, that list next to the, the register is key. It's key. It's you key. might, it sounds remedial, but it's not. It's not. And how about if, this? You, if you don't have that product, you're not making money. How many times? I've looked at the end of the day, the books, and I'm like, man, I could have made another $500 today, but it walked out the door because I didn't have what they wanted. Go for yeah, it. I have a question. Sure. You said you have this new system you implemented at your smoke shops for that daily download thing. So is the system just having your store manager have to talk to them at the beginning of every shift? Every or shift. Or is there another? I, I send out the parameters of what the focus the store manager should be worried about. Inventory levels need to be shared. You do that every day? Every day. Every day, even if the freaking same employee came in the day before and it's the same conversation again, highlight it. It's okay, they're 19 years old, they're 22 years old. They just went out last night and got blasted and they just had two hours of sleep. They're gonna come back and hang out with you. So you send an email to your manager, your manager has to translate that to everyone when they ship stuff. For sure, and, it's, and it's, what we do is we do it once a week and if it's, not, if it's not that serious of a month or some of our slower months, then I just have the parameter set for that month. So that way it's not a, like a tall task for me. Does that make sense? Like it's not a burden for me to put that out. Because the idea is if you're not passionate about doing it, they're not gonna do it, right? So my due diligence is, is if it's something that's heavy, every Monday we'll have that conversation, it trickles down, right? If you're treating your manager with respect and giving them the leeway to take care of your store, they're gonna do the same thing, right? They're gonna pass that, that positivity and that progression down. So the idea is lead by example show what you want to be seen. And it's okay to hold your team accountable. I'm so tired of hearing freaking managers say, well, I don't know how to deal with conflict. Conflict is way okay. Do not disrespect, do not discredit. And what I always like to do is I start off with, you do this great, but you don't do this as well. And I want you to be as great at this as you are at that. Really simple, really. It took the edge off rather than, you keep fucking up on this, dude. If you do it one more fucking time, I swear to fucking God, it's gonna fucking be your ass. Not receptive. I always like to give positivity, share the challenge that I want them or the behavior that I want to change, and then reiterate that they are capable of making that change and adapting or making that pivot. When you talk to our team members like you're equal and you talk to them with respect, you get a lot more on the other side of it. Plain and simple. If somebody talked down to me, that's a quick way of me walking out. Fuck you and your money. I'll find something else to do. I'm good at it, right? So you want to keep your talent. How you keep your talent is you treat your talent well. On the surprise and delight, 
Uh, take a picture of that, guys, and then really home in on it, because that is the daily download, and I'm, it's, I, it, it's paid dividends across the board. When you're seeing the do not tell, do you discount items, the discounting boosts your UPT. UPT is an acronym that the rest of freaking uh, retail industry uses. It's called units per transaction. The idea is when you're sitting in Best Buy, you're sitting in uh, Apple, they don't want a customer to walk out with one item. They're not concerned about the price of that item. They just don't want a customer to walk out with one. They want that customer to walk out with four or five. So how do we do that? We spoke about it earlier, kind of go full circle. Complete solution. We ask the open-ended questions and we offer the products that goes with it. So if you're talking about generating more, you don't have to discount. Just ask better questions. It's really what it comes down to. Does it work every freaking time? No, but you'll see 20% up. You really will. That's the challenge that I had to all my managers. I want to see 20% more sales, and this is how I want you to tackle that. And then you tell me where you're having your obstacles or your problems with. And you know what it is normally what the issue is? Is that they don't want to answer the objection. George, they told me that they don't need it right now. Well, you do. You need it because you're getting ready to smoke a hookah and you're gonna need some shisha, you're gonna need some coal. So you do need it. Oh, I didn't think about that. I want a torch. <laughs> cool, we got those too, right? Another thing is, is that customers love choices, right? Put three out there for them. High, medium, low. Nine times out of 10, they're going for the medium just because they don't want to look cheap, especially if they got their girlfriend with them. Right? Let's go. They, he would have bought that cheaper one. But she's looking at it going, ah, there's the middle one, right? And if you didn't put all three out there in front of them from the first place, you couldn't have drawn up that situation. You couldn't build that kind of a conversation. Yeah, if you only offer the cheaper one, that's the only that's option what they you got. And another thing is, is that I made that as a, as a basic best practice with our team members, so that way they can put product back. If I go into the store and I see 32 pieces sitting on the freaking shelf, I saw on the deck, oh man, that's a pet peeve from hell. Cause I'm like, dude, how the, do you know what's on the freaking table? How do you know what's on the table? How do you know what to position? How do you know what to offer? Like what a clusterfuck. Three items at a time, if they don't like it, you put that one back and you put someone else in their front. Simple best practice. It works, inventory management becomes easier, and the customer isn't overwhelmed, right? Now you're not pushing the sale away. You made it concise, you made it easy to follow. That's what we're doing here, guys. We're dealing with stoners, yeah, but they're smart. They read, they jump online, they do their research. I got some customers that can talk circles around my team. Talk circles. Can't sell shit, though. They're great at talking about stuff, it's cool. Those aren't the customers that you gotta freaking hunt down and freaking uh, you kiss, you know, kiss butt to. Those aren't the ones. They know the product already. They're probably, they probably get better access than we do. It's kind of sad, but they probably do. They can probably get right to them and get a better price. Don't waste your time there, guys. Educate the customers that are paying you your bills, right? That's why I keep on saying, control your controllables, your four walls, know your demographics. Not every customer is gonna want a freaking $5,000 piece, and not every customer is gonna want the cheap stuff. The best part about our smoke shops is that we can put whatever we want in there, and as long as the customers are buying it, we're good. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. I thought I saw a hand, we're good? No, we're good. I had a question. Please. Uh, what do you guys charge your employees for the products that you sell? I do like a 90 day, and it's just cost plus 10%. Cost plus 10? Yeah, yeah I, I do, I pretty much sell at a cost, you know, plus obviously the taxes, but a um, couple of reasons why I do that. One, you know, you appreciate them and you don't want them to, you know, pay full price for the items that you have on the shelf and stuff like that. Two, if they can get it at the cost you're getting it at, it's possibly less likely that they're gonna wanna take it from you. And three, the more stuff they have at their house or around their friends and stuff, these people see this stuff, they're gonna probably help you sell it, plus they're gonna know how to use the product better. Especially with all the vapor stuff. They take home, you know, a Dr. Dapper or whatever, you know, they know how to use it a lot better and maybe tell the customer, you know, some tricks of uh, how to use it better and stuff like that. Well, the supplier. Yeah, so you're, you're educating them, yet they're, you know, and they're doing it at their own leisure, at their time. 
and you're giving it to them at the price that you got it at. Yeah. Well, do, I mean, you, do you wait for your employees, or you just let it, as soon as they're hired, they get that discount? As soon as they're hired. I don't. Yeah. I, I'll I don't them. hire that often. Like I said, I got. I'll differ. I tell you right now, I, you got to earn it. That's all. I'll give you twelve. There's like that. everything else in corporate America. She, you're waiting nine days. You wait nine days for insurance. You wait nine days for discounts. You wait nine days for freaking uh, asking for a day off. Wait. Why are we different? Why can Nordstrom's do that? Why can Apple do that? Why can everyone else do it? Because we're a small business, so we get to take it in the butt. I felt like I got burned by like one of my, I don't know, it was just it was, I'm new to all of this. It was one of, one of my first employees, and they were only here for like a short time. But they bought like a bunch of glass, and it was like, oh, hey, cost plus tan shirt, oh, that's a cool piece. And I only had like 10 of them, and I only had nine of those, mm -hmm. and then I was like, should have sold that. Well, and then we left after a month or something. And I was like, that was like the biggest it's, it's, How about this, brother? It's a growing pain, and I love your office. It's a growing pain. It's, it's, it's what we all go through. You're going to start getting thicker skin, and you're going to start realizing what you got to deal with in your stores. And, and on Hate Street, at one of our locations, dude, they don't do any get discounts. They have, they have to ask for a discount. Because we had so many freaking team members that came in, worked for three days, got what they wanted, didn't even come back for the fucking check. <laughs> Believe it, believe it with my heart and soul. Did not come back with a check. Screw the 80 bucks. I already saved 600 on this piece. Fuck them. Right? And so, I mean, it's, 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 I'm not saying it's every demographic, but I'm saying it, it, it happens. And so that's why that scar has like wounded me. So that's why I make, I make everybody do it. Screw it, you know? Fool me once, right? So it, it could be a case by case basis. I mean, you might have that one hire, like, damn, you know what, dude, screw it, he's not going anywhere, I know he's not going anywhere, or she's not going anywhere, I'm gonna take care of you. Do it, dude, do it. I mean, I think that's the best part of being a small business owner, is that we can do that when we want to. But remember, your good heart and your good nature will be taken advantage of. You gotta remember that, guys. Just because you care so much about your business and you're treating people so well, people will take advantage of that. Uh, it happened to me. A uh, couple employees, they were with me for like four years. One of them was even the, uh, stepson of the manager who passed away. I found out after he passed away, um, we're doing some taxes I had to do, so I got in my computer and all this stuff. I come to find out for like three years they're voiding out cash sales and the product's walking out the door and they're taking the cash. Oh. What? And that's with the POS guys. And I gave it to him on the, I gave him a raise the day I found out he was robbing me. <sighs> it's not your fault though. Don't start freaking feeling bad for yourself. Don't start looking at yourself in the mirror going, what am I doing wrong? I'm such a shitty owner. You know what it happens. Wrong? We set up the POS wrong, and the uh, security level on the voids was too low. Mm -hmm. There's always controllables. Well, luckily I had the POS to figure it out. Yes, yeah, so if you guys aren't on POS, I mean, I love you guys, but even my uncle's on POS, and he's like 70 years old. <laughs> if you can figure out Clover, we can figure out Clover. I use one <laughs> I, use, I use Retail Edge been around for gosh since the 90s and they just like updated it all the time it's a $400 investment 450 which is not bad and then you could either run free or you could pay for like a bronze silver or gold membership I pay gold it's 45 a month I ever have a problem I get on the phone they call me right back what I love so about worth 45 a month and 450 for the program retail that's edge, not a very sorry. big retail edge retail POS edge. What I love about POS as well, that we didn't hump on, we didn't talk about, we talked about inventory management. I love data. Love it, love it, love it, love it. That's number they one. They don't lie. They don't lie. And number two, what I also love that POS does that I couldn't do with my freaking 10 key, is I can hit my customers back up and go, hey, we got a promo going on. Come bring your ass. Yeah, we haven't, right? done <laughs> we haven't gotten emails. I, I still haven't figured out a way to get an email list. I, it's Maybe be, just put it up on the counter and fuck that. Fill it if out. you're ringing it up, you're making your customer ask. How about you're making your employee ask? How about that? You hey, would you mind just getting your email list? Or we have or? exclusive offers that we only okay. do. E exclusive okay. is the word, ladies and gentlemen. I could, I never believed that one word can change a freaking mind of a customer. Exclusive. Something about exclusive makes motherfuckers go like this, huh? <laughs> it really does, and that is it. It is amazing to me how I changed from newsletter because that's how I told my. Team. It's for the newsletter, guys. Tell us for the newsletter. Tell us for the newsletter. Nobody yeah, reads no their newsletter. <laughs> no one. But exclusive promos, exclusive freeze. Oh, I want exclusive, right? So that email becomes easy. And if you do it to every customer every time, out of every ten, you probably get six of them who say yes. It's got the average has gone up. People are more interested in getting it, you know, the exclusivity. And it doesn't have to be a discount on the product. It can be just like. Free product to throw in. A lighter. Roll it. Oh, 
Right? If you just can give them anything, anything, they love it. Period. Especially if they don't ask for something and you give it, really? Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? I mean, even this little card, I'm telling you, this little card cost me like 25 cents. <laughs> little plastic card, see-through with my logo on and all my information. They love it. For 15 minutes. Any questions? Over. Dude, I'm letting you guys go. Yeah, it's all right. We kind of skipped over the uh, negotiating prices thing. Okay. Go over it. Let's go over it, go over it, go over it. So, the negotiation, the prices. I want to make it simple because I've been on both ends of the stick, guys. I'm a store owner and I sell two store owners. So, the, the nuance and that synergy was really hard to dance around at first. It didn't work as well as I thought it was, and I realized I was the competitor. And once I broke that down, I realized that, okay, we can negotiate. It's simple. As a buyer, to not be an asshole, if you're buying two items, don't negotiate, guys. Just do you a solid on that. Oh, it's that simple. Bless you. It's not. It's not okay to kick somebody in the chin for their hard work because you want to buy one item. But if this is an item that you guys are loading up on, and we got, you're spending close to 30 grand, whatever the big number for you is annually on this product, and you're purchasing it in that manner, it is in your best interest to ask for a discount. Free shipping, something. But to go in and ask one of these artists to, to buy one piece and to think it's okay to ask 20% off, that's not it. That's not, it's not cool. You're just you're discrediting the person you're talking to. And how about this? If you walked up to me and did that, I'd tell you go fuck yourself. That's simple. Just, you're gonna, just to get, take food off of my plate and my wife's plate and my kid's plate and all that because you think you deserve 20% off for one item. That's not cool. But like I said, if you're buying $30,000, you're buying 22 items, you're purchasing it every two months, three months. Yes, ask for the discount, please. Please, please. And it, well, sorry. Are you asking to be able to sell it for a cheaper price than a competitor or are you asking to you know, make a little bit more money? I usually like, try to make a little bit more money. As a store owner, that's yeah, what I'm, I'm trying, trying to do. Right we, now, that's the reason we don't want to do this, council, because we don't want them to sell it cheaper than somebody else. Agreed. No, I'm trying to get better margins is what I'm looking at. That's number one. And as an artist, so brother, it's called you control that channel. You really do, because you, when you sell your that's product. That's why your buying quantity is for the margin. You're trying to, even a dollar, two dollars. I buy my uh, ISO, you buy 16 of them, you get six dollars each. You buy 60 of them, you get them for 430 a piece. That's two dollars and whatever, you know, a dollar seventy. It adds up. And when I say negotiate, that's called that. It really doesn't really work well for what we're doing here at this show. Specifically. If you got quantity, do you have quantity, you know, pricing? You know, that's a white, nice way to say it. Yeah. Do you, you have, have quantity to... pricing? I'd like to see if I could buy more. Agree. Or but... free shipping. Do you have any free shipping deals? That helps too. Who I'm hitting up for these discounts are generally suppliers for products that I'm buying all year long. What I've tried to do, what Phil and I didn't even know each other before the show, we're hanging out, having a conversation about what we want to talk to you guys about, and we both have the same best practice. If I'm selling a thousand or two thousand freaking uh, you know, monkey piss, and it takes me seven months to freaking sell it, I don't buy it monthly. I try to buy it for the seven months and kick the supplier down a ten percent, twenty percent deal, so that I can figure or free shipping, and it's not going to go bad. I got a product that's going to give me an extra twenty percent in my pocket. And I have it on stock. And you didn't do anything. You didn't do right? nothing. Besides so <laughs> just buy Bolt more. Up. You both up. Now, when you're trying to do what you're doing here, as for the artist, my 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 always go to was, I want to make a order with you. I don't want to buy what you have here. Whether it's sold or not, I'm not tripping on it. I want you to make these colors because my customers love this, right? And how many of them do I need to buy from you? so I can get them at this price, so I can sell them for this price. If the artist likes the MSRP, because that's really what it ends up coming down to, they don't want to be undercut, and they don't want to look like they're shitty or, de or devalue their product. Or giving deals or giving deals. down the street. Or Agreed. If you guys can come into terms with that, that is a way better conversation than, well, I just want that one right there, and I, 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 I can only sell it for 500 bucks. Well, dude, I'm selling it to you for 500 bucks. I'm like, how come I gonna sell it? You know, so it's like, be reasonable, but ask for when you're negotiating for discounts, the kick is, is that know your audience. If you're talking to an artist who can only make you three pieces, sorry to tell you, that's not the guy to ask for a discount. 
Let's be honest, he's not the one, she's not the one. But if there's a freaking, if there's like US tubes, God bless her heart, he's got a production team, it's all clear glass, you can smack the hell out of it anywhere you want. If you want a discount, because you're buying five grand, I bet you they'll say yes, right? But if you're gonna come in there for 500 bucks, thank you for your business. Let us know what we can do more for you, all right? That's the response, all right? So put it in, put negotiation into perspective who you're talking to. That's the biggest thing. Who's your audience? If you're talking to the freaking the vape boys in the back corner, who's got you know, which is funny to me because Las Vegas, right? We still got the vape boys hanging out in the back corner. Uh, <laughs> it makes me smile. I love them all. Don't trust me. I still buy from them all. But yeah, but I'm gonna ask for a discount. I'm buying freaking three cases of freaking pineapple apple or pineapple uh, mango of this freaking one thing. I know you got it, and I'm that's the only flavor I want. I want two bucks on it. George, how many cases again? Twelve. Two bucks? Yeah, you know what I mean? So that's a negotiation where you can beat them up a little bit because they're freaking loading up. But I would never walk up to a Salt or to a Lugan or to a Z or any, you know, then be like, your product isn't worth shit. Let me freaking, uh, you know, I, can, I can't sell it at that price, so you have to discount it so I can sell it at that price. No, that's not, that's, not the, that's not the process. That's not how it works. It really doesn't. So really think about it in that manner where you gotta know your audience before you start, you know, dropping hammers and swinging. Did I hit it? Did oh, yeah, that was pretty good. Cool. So I just want to make sure that we got it. It's, it's a hard one. It really is. But I show specials. How about that? If you don't want to negotiate, I think the best yeah, freaking thing. Is there any show specials you have? And that kind of leads into the conversation without being like, I want a deal. All right? Are there any show specials? And nine times out of ten, the guy behind the counter doesn't have one, but just to keep you there is going to freaking try to show you, right? Just yeah. like you would in your store. Here's a show special. Right. Or he might come up with one right then and there. Right then and there. <laughs> you know what, we don't have one, but you know what, I'll do you 10% off right yeah. now. You well, know, if you, if you like buy three grand, I'll work this deal for you at 10%. And really, at that point, you just did yourself a great service. The person did the numbers in their head if they're smart. Ours is smart enough, they knew where their bottom line was at, and they shared it with you, right? And the cool thing is, pay them on time. Yeah. That's a nice one, dude. I, I don't know how many glass artists I got to deal with that I talk to that still do consignment. I blow my mind. Well, what are you, nuts? Like, you took your hard-ass work and you handed it to somebody the fuck else and said, 30 days? Huh? Yeah, payment on, <laughs> on time rolls back to the budget thing again. Mm -hmm. Don't go through the show and get 50 invoices in your hand because you, I like that, I like that, I like that. <laughs> then you're going to go home and you're going to go, all right, I can't get that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for one, you know, you, you know, it's a, it's a bunch of waste of time. But two, that that blower, if you tell him no, he might never do work with you again. Again, ever, yeah. ever, ever, because you, you know, because they're, just, they're depending on this. It's their livelihood. Most of the guys here, are, you know, blow home for themselves. It's not a business. Yeah, you know? it's not a co-op. Co so don't don't go out there and just start ordering stuff, thinking you know, I'll make my decisions when I get home, type thing, or you know. It goes back to the circle like we started off with, know your demographics, control your controllables, be in the know of your customer base. Not every not every store is gonna kick butt with Elbow. Not every store is gonna kick butt with Z. Not every store is gonna kick butt with Odell. Not every store is gonna kick butt with these brain names. I right? know what can sell in my store and what, what doesn't, but it's because I pay attention. You gotta pay attention. And it's humbling too. You gotta remember, sometimes you, we all wanna freaking be the best at everything, so we start chasing what, what we think the best is in our industry, and what we do is we dig ourselves a hole, rather than just take care of what we need to take care of. You know, it's, called, it's nice to be the best of the best, but it's a lot nicer to be able to feed the family, pay the freaking bills, pay your team, make sure you can get to work and just freaking the lights can turn on. That shit goes way further along than, I got a thousand followers and likes on Instagram. Yeah, and and stuck, yeah. stuck with the female adapter. Uh, Dude, I, I, mean, I love female <laughs> things. That's the reason why I love, why I love De Darby. Darby took the pieces back and converted them. He did a sex change for me. He's like, George, how many pieces you got? Oh my like, God, 12 of them. He's like, I'm going to do a sex change. And at first, I'm like, Wow. I didn't. I didn't know what the fuck he meant. Like I, I didn't have to register for a second. I'm like, what is this exchange? I don't know if I'm asking for this. That's not what I wanted. I wanted different pieces. What are you doing, Darby? Come on, man. That Ben shit. I'm not. I'm not in Oregon. We're not used to that kind of stuff. But no, you know, it's like, but dude, he did it. Yeah, but he should have been right. <laughs> but the, 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 when he did that, it, it blew my mind. Right? It blew my mind. And that Thank goes you. back to relationships. So George, do you, you, you never said no to me, bro. George, when you buy, you tell you like, do you always buy? I would do that for you. Thanks. And that was like eight years ago. It was like when they first did the, you know, first the transition started making. And everyone was like, George, how'd you get him to do it? I'm like, I didn't even ask him. 
I didn't even ask him. He called me up and said, Andrew, how many pieces you have left? I said, oh shit. Dude, he loved it, bro. I didn't realize I had 18 of them. He's like, send them all back. And lit me up, lit me up. And they all sold. Everything went, right? So it's like, thank you, right? And once again, synergy. These are relationships that you want to cultivate, you want to develop, you want to keep. You don't want to keep flying out to Vegas to keep saying hi to the same motherfucker who doesn't remember you. <laughs> Promise you, you don't want that. It costs too much money. It costs way too much money. Get to know these people, shake your hands, and the people that matter spend the time. If it doesn't fit your budget, and it doesn't fit your store, stop trying to force it. And stop, I, just, I see it over and over and over again. Stop trying to force it. You're gonna put yourself in a bad position. You might not be able to get out of it. Work your way backwards, dude, it's dumb. So start going back to best of basics, guys. It's not surviving, it's thriving. Go back to the basics. Go back to the freaking meat and potatoes. That's where the freaking love is. And you know what? If this, if this is your meat and potatoes, they kill it. Go after it. There's beautiful glass out there, get it. You know, if that's your meat and potatoes. If it's not your meat and potatoes, know how much percentage in your business. If it's 20%, then 20% of your budget goes to it. If it's 50, 30%, 30% of your budget goes to it. If it's 10, spend 10. Don't get happy and be like, oh, I can get that extra. If you're out there, you should be able to know right away what you're gonna sell it for in your store and if it's gonna work or not. You know the limit of people, what they can spend, they spend in your area, your demographic, you know? It's all different. I mean, Gorilla Radios in Vegas, they, they have all crazy heady pieces. I don't know. If anybody's ever heard of them, but if you should go check them out in Vegas, they are legit. Gorilla Radio. They are legit. They are uh, they are by far the, the headiest store in town. In the beginning, I tried to I don't want to say compete, but try to keep up with the Joneses. You know what I mean? And I realized that wasn't my cup of tea. You know, I, I fit where I fit, and, uh, and there's he room. Where he fits. There's room, guys. There's room. There's room. Any other questions? Because we can talk all day if you haven't noticed yet. Right? <laughs> Go for it. Just say back to like um, obtaining customer information. Just one thing we utilize is we offer anyone who walks in the door 10% off of anything they want, provided you give us your name and email. We do it. Well, which doctors we call it? A patient account. So just like good brand. Temperate. Thanks so much. 10% off of anything. We don't give nothing. We have like 30,000 emails plus. Wow. Provided. There's a lot of duplicates and triplicates on people's so mm -hmm. like 10,000 strong for sure. Easily. And it really, I feel like uh, in turn, people really appreciate that and come back for more and stuff. You know, some people don't want to do it, but a lot of times too, if I'm setting up an account with somebody, I'm like, we don't even have so you don't send me anything. Most of the time, they like literally, they say, oh, send us stuff. Yeah. Like, so you got offers or discounts. Yeah, or they want to know what's in the stuff. store. If you yeah. send them the new stuff all the time, you know, how do they know you got in the stuff that they've been looking for? Back to basics. To Remember Safeway sends coupons? <laughs> they still send fucking coupons. <laughs> Safeway still sends coupons. You got a code, you got a phone number with a card, you walk into the store and you get the freaking discount, they still send coupons. So what does that mean? That means it is a behavior that works. It's something that is generating them income. You're doing it right, brother. You're freaking allowing yourself to reach out to the customers and get out there so that they don't have to freaking come in if they don't want to. Do, you put, do you put them in the POS system? Yeah. So let me tell you if it's a duplicate or not? It does, but then you gotta like merge them and stuff. So it's gotcha. like, yeah, we gotta go through it. Yeah, it becomes work though. I got you. But it's sweet. That's a lot of times people like don't, I don't know if I have an account or not. It's right, right, right. It's kind of tricky sometimes. It'll I know, I got five there. emails, so I'll give you one minute. <laughs> <laughs> At least, right? Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one, brother. Thanks for sharing. Appreciate yeah, thank you. Guys. you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Any other questions? Stay quiet on this side. Yo. Um, you guys were mentioning earlier, this is something most glass workers are sensitive to, uh, is this notion of, you know, you've sold it at wholesale to a shop and you don't want to be undercutting that shop. But like one thing that I've been a little kind of touchy myself with is like, if I want to do a Christmas sale or, an, you know what I mean? Like, is there a kind of a middle ground because shops do sales too. Like, how do you navigate that? With, and not feel like you're going to be undercutting the shop. Is there a limit or is there is, a limit. Is, is it's, a, it's like, a conversation that I have with the artist. Just talk I, to the shop? You talk to the artist. Yeah. This is what I want to, this is what every artist, if I can get in their ear and I get them to freaking follow this freaking, uh, this guideline or follow like follow suit, I think that the smoke shop industry, the smoke shop owners and the, the, the artists, the synergy will take it to the next level. Okay. 
your product isn't allowed to be sold at wholesale outside. Yeah. That's just basic business. You just literally cut the whole freaking industry out because you wanted to go direct. Yeah. You want to go to direct still though, right? George, I'm still gonna go direct. Fuck the bullshit, I'm still gonna do it. Cool, if that's how you feel, then please choose the items that you are going to go direct with Yeah. and do that, and the shit you're gonna sell me, don't. Yeah, that's good. good. Right? That, that's how mean, I do it, exactly, yeah. The freaking catalog has to freaking go one way or the other. There's synergy, there's medians. We can meet each other halfway. If you got some super heady shit that you wanna make sure you eat and you wanna freaking get the, hey dude, I'm not gonna say no. Okay. But if you're, if you're gonna sell it to me, and you're gonna make 12 pieces behind it, they look exactly the same. And you're gonna, you're gonna say, you're, and it happens though, like that's what happens. They get, people get, artists get so caught up sometimes, it's like business owners, we dig ourselves a hole, that whatever we have, we gotta get paid, right? We gotta just get our money back into circulation. So, well, like those auctions, I've seen people sell their piece for 300 and then they auction it off for 300. Mm -hmm. And you're like, what the heck? So, really, what it comes down and to. You put it at, then you market it at 300 and you're like, right, I'm done. Yeah, bye. Let's go call it a day. So, it's, it's a fine line. So, but that's a, that's a simple solution, right, guys? A simple solution is how about this? My fixed perks, I'm selling. You guys get all the ones that you got a pull key. Cool. Mm -hmm. Done. Game over. We're not stepping on each other's toes. Right? There's ways of being able to, to, to keep these relationships whole. Right? And that's just one. Another one that I like to do, like when you said exclusives, I like exclusives. I really do. If I can buy up a freaking shit with a bunch of glass that I know this artist and that, like Aaron Vigil is the name. Like, so I don't even see Aaron as much as I used to, but I would buy everything he made. Didn't get two shits. My bulls, his, his chillums, his, his ones, whatever he had, I would just buy it all. Why? Because I know I cultivated my my store to freaking have these customers come in for that price for Aaron shit and pump it out, and he would never complain. He's all George. It's one stop. He's all it's easier. He's come see you. Shit. They love it, right? He's got two kids at home. He's got better things to do than sit there and try to run dance around, around trying yeah try to figure it out. So these are these are great uh, great relationships that I that hold on to tight, right? And when I call him and I ask him if I need a certain colors, if I need bowls, he answers. And you can talk to them if you want to do discounts. Yeah. Now you got the relationship. You're, you're hey man, I'm gonna drop the prices for the holidays or something or 420 or 710. Yeah, and you're good. So it's called. There's ways for both. Like I said, it's it's, it's it's one hand in the other. It's called. We're the same team. We really are. We really are. And I've I've seen like if you want to talk about how you know glass artists who open up their own smoke shops. Some glass artists see what we do as smoke shop owners and go, dude, I want to do that. There's money in there. Fuck that. Why do I have to fix it behind the torch? I can do both, right? And then you find out real quickly, there's two different minds. The creative mind, that scientific mind, that mind that needs to be, you know, here, is a different person than, hi guys, what's up, y'all? Welcome to Vegas! That is not most of the freaking smoke shop, sorry, sorry, most of the artists that I know, at least not sober. Maybe yeah. afterwards, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so that kind of passion, that kind of personality, that's why we're here. We're not gonna get replaced, ladies and gentlemen. We're not. They need us, we need them. And that's really what the biggest picture that I wanted to put this out here. We need the artists, they need us, and vice versa, right? So if you can make the relationships work, and that's why you're spending the time here, because that's why you came out, right? You came out here to shoot the shit, and if you can meet these people, and make sure that you want to do business with them. Get to know them, just like your customer. Get to know them, because if you can't talk to them here, face to face, imagine the shit conversation you're gonna have when the invoice comes with no fucking, in, with no, no, no numbers on it, with, you can't even tell what color is what and who's who in the suit. Chicken scratch. Chicken scratch, and they wrote it on the back of a newspaper, and you know what I mean, like, God bless. Some of our freaking glass artists. I love them, but some of them like, wow. Right? So figure that out. If you're a freaking very, very detail-oriented person, share that with the person you're buying. So that way they would know that and take it the extra effort to make sure you're happy. If you don't say it, they're gonna throw it in the fucking box and you're gonna get it hopefully. Right? So these are definitely good uh, good, good points. Any more questions? We're good? Who's gonna do a dab? Let's go. Oh. <laughs> <I'm> like, ready. 